Okay, so there's a shop. It was basically an old house, and they turned into the, a consignment store with women's clothing. Um, there was a creepy mannequin in there. Um, like a resale, basically it's like a resale shop. So people bring in their uh, their garments and jewelry, and uh, you give them two months to have it at the shop, and you try to resell it for a certain price, and you give the person who's selling it the money if it sells. That's consignment, which is just overly complex, needs a lot of computer work and paperwork. So, backtracking even more, I had this girlfriend who uh, worked there and uh, met her at a show, blah, blah, blah. It's not necessary to describe. But uh, I used to just hang around there because she'd be there at work too. And there's like a kitchen in there since it was uh, since it was actually a house turned into a shop. And they would just give me wine and we would eat crackers and just talk and talk about stupid shit and stuff. Um, so it was fun to hang around there. And that's where I'm, that's how I got the t-shirt slash driving job was because one of uh, my, my girlfriend's friends who ended up co-owning that place, <laughs> this is too much to explain, um, well, was there. So she needed help driving, she asked me, there we go. That's how I got that job. And uh, eventually, Moran uh, <laughs> my girlfriend quit. And then she wasn't my girlfriend anymore. And over time, uh, when, I when I got... When I couldn't work at her house, at that lady's house anymore. Then I started working at inside the consignment shop. And I did a little bit of t-shirt stuff, but not very much. Mostly I just worked at the shop, just holding the counter, helping people, blah, blah, blah. They were, they were losing money bad. That's why they even got that lady who I was working for to kind of buy into it, to kind of extend the life. And these, these girls loved the place because it was like their, again, pretend business to, uh, I don't know, have something to do during the day. And uh, they drink wine, of course. So drink, so... Of course, a place where you can just pretend you're working and drink instead and gab is an awesome deal. So why not perpetuate that as long as you can? Uh, and I enjoyed that too. And there's like a camera in the kitchen. So what, I could just sit in the back, drink wine, smoke ganj. And uh, if somebody came up on the screen in the store, I would rush out to the front <coughs> and... Uh, you know, help them if I had any help, but I wasn't, at the time, I wasn't really into fashion or anything, I didn't know anything about women's clothes or anything, so, like, if somebody asked me questions, I didn't really, I couldn't really help them very well, um, let's see here, so I would also do tarot there sometimes, too, as a random thing, uh, as a side thing, um, actually, I wanted to mention, uh, it sucked downgrading to that place because I got paid way less. I think I got paid like 14 doing shirts and uh, and driving, and they downgraded me to eight, which is a pretty heavy, heavy downgrade. And I worked more hours, so <clears throat> it was like I was getting paid around the same, but working so much more. And it was just the situation was getting worse and worse. Um, but I enjoyed. The side thing, which was I planned some events, so it was really fun to do this. I really enjoy it. Uh, I had like a, a wellness speaking event. Uh, we had a few shows. There was South by Southwest going on, so I had a sh I planned a show which we built like a little uh, stage out in the out in the yard and we had like people playing I ran the soundboard I felt really cool running around doing stuff so uh, another day we had poetry so these events were really cool and I implement this later in my life where I want to do stuff kinda around this in my own way uh, so one day when I was doing one of these shows the uh, that jealous husband came back out of nowhere 
while I was trying to run all this shit, running around, and he's like, he's like, he's like, even though you're at my house, I still don't, I'm still jealous of you, he's like, you need to get out of here, you need to stop, stop being around my wife whatsoever. I was like, dude, don't talk to me right now. I'm doing shit right now. I'm really busy. I got, I'm running around like a maniac, trying to, trying to get bands to play. And he, and he, like he's like he's he's being really aggressive, like really threatening. Like he went in my face and stuff. And his daughter is there too. And I'm like, are you gonna talk like this in front of your daughter? And he's like, it's like, well, go inside. So he tells her to go inside. It's just like, he's he was just acting like such a shitty person. Like it was so dumb. Um. So I basically got fed up with that shit. I was like, if I'm at work and somebody's coming, interrupting my work to like threaten me, that's bullshit. I, and I'm plus I'm getting paid less. This is not worth anymore. I need to set some strong boundaries. I am not. I told her I'm not going to work for her anymore. I'm not going to work at that place anymore. I'm done. Um, so that was that. Um, now, what I was going to talk about before, which I remembered now I did this now, the graphic design. That old uh, place, one of the programmers, that place that was quote unquote a business, uh, that that software place, one of the programmers who was a legit programmer, he, one of the con one of the contracts they had with doing a point of sale system, he kind of reopened it. He took it and said he could do it, and he needed a graphic designer, so. He got me to work on it, and so he actually paid me. He actually, I got legitimate monies for that, and it was good money. And I got to work at home, and just turn in my the hours I worked. I went back to Chicago for a bit to uh, for three months, I think, and was able to work while I was over there. I did it for a while, except I don't know. Out of nowhere, he just like he's like, "You're not proactive enough. I need a real designer. You're done." So. I lost that job, which he was crazy anyways. I didn't want to work for him anymore. So back in Texas, uh, I started working at this grocery store as a as a cashier. So I had a pretty good money doing a graphic design, and then now to like the bottom, back to uh, back to minimum wage, pretty much. And I didn't mind it because there was no more drama. There was no more weird pressure. It was just do your job for the day, you're done, go home, do what you want to do, which at that time I was into making vi my own video games, and uh, so as long as I was able to do that, pay for my cheap house, uh, I could I could be okay. Um, cashiering was interesting, It uh, you had to learn all the codes, all those crazy codes for all those vegetables and stuff, and uh, you, know, you see down the line if somebody has like a million vegetables, you're like, oh god, this is gonna be tough. And uh, I just had a lot of pressure to do a good job. Even th you know, even though it's minimum wage, I still you have a person, a human being right there, who you know has an agenda for the day. They they, and you want to service them. You want to give them a good experience. And the best way to do that is to talk to them. Actually, the t whole talking thing. I explained to one guy once, because he was like. He's like, he's like, God, don't you just like hate talking small talk and like just talking about nothing or whatever? And I was telling the dude, I was like, when you have a cashier, make sure you fucking talk to them. He's like, because it's fucking awkward, like just standing there, not saying anything. Just talk about something. Who cares what the fuck it is? You gotta talk about something. Because that dissolves the awkwardness. And I was really devout about that. So you just, you know, you talk about the weather. You talk about something. Just anything. Because once you open that up, then you can talk about other things. And, you know, it goes by. But sometimes you would say even say hi. And the person doesn't even respond to you. They just look at you. And it's like, what the fuck? So after enough times of that happening, you just kind of like, you become like a drone. And instead of saying anything, you just kind of like get through the day and you kind of detach. You almost become like a robot. So that's kind of a weird aspect. I had a similar experience when I was a cashier later in life. Um, so actually in that job, there was a baker position opening up. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
give me that position. Give me, give me, give me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he's like, I don't have to be a cashier anymore. And I'm like, baking stuff? I've always wanted to be a pastry chef. So I got to be a baker. Although this had its own set of problems. Um, yeah. yeah. Let's put another quotes thing. Baking. It was baking. I don't know what you, if you call it baking when you just take frozen dough. And, uh, I mean, this is a legitimate grocery store chain. I'm not going to mention their name. And uh, you put it, you put frozen dough. Well, granted, you do like a real piece of bread. You put it in the, a, hum a humid environment to rise. And then you bait, and then you put it in the oven. But there's no dough making. I guess they want the production to be efficient, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I eventually, it was really stressful because they had a huge list of things to do for the day. And it was impossible to get every single thing done. Like, you could be rushing like crazy, and uh, you can never get it done. So I, it was really stressful because you want to be able to do a good job. You want to be able to satisfied. And if you got somebody telling you, you need to work faster, you can't, you're not getting all the things you need to get done. And I'm like, well, uh, I try to stay late those days. And they're like, but you can't stay late. You have to get it done in time. You can't stay more than nine hours or whatever. I'm just like, what the fuck? If I can't stay late and I, I can't work any faster than this, this is bullshit. Like, I just had this ridiculous pressure on me unnecessarily. So I actually told them, hey, can I be a cashier again? Like, this is too stressful like this. Fuck this shit. Um, and so they were transferring me to be a cashier. But a different position opened up. A different opportunity. That was weird and different. 